everyone, and welcome to Get Celebritized. I'm your host, Araya McGarry, and I just love bringing you this show each and every week where I bring on phenomenal people to help you earn more, live more, live bigger, greater lives so you can give back more to the people and causes that are, causes that are important to you. And I am just jumping out of my skin excited today because I have a new friend now here in the Atlanta area who is a recent TEDx speaker. And you know how much I love the platform of TEDx because the most amazing people on the TEDx stages. So Ethan King is no exception to that. He is a top rated international speaker and MC. He has shared the stage with people like Gary V, Ari Ariana Huffington, and Grant Cardone. Ethan has won awards for business growth and industry achievements and has worked, worked his work, let me spit this out, has appeared on Oprah, you know, I love Oprah, and 60 Minutes. Some of his clients have included celebrities such as Another Atlanta family member of all of ours here in Atlanta, Tyler Perry, Akon, and Rick Ross, as well as major enterprises like Coca-Cola and Marvel Studios. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to meet you in person. You are right here in our neck of the woods in Atlanta. Ethan, come on up. Oh my gosh, I'm surprised we haven't met sooner. Hi. Hey, hey it's so great to be here. How are you? I am fabulous. And as I'm reading these accolades, it's like, oh my gosh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. <laughs> Holy cow, how we haven't met before that. I have no idea. You are amazing. And you have also, um, you had, you've been, you, you came from um, humble beginnings, a starving artist struggling to make ends meet while working as a trash boy at a seedy Atlanta nightclub. And then you encountered a robbery at gunpoint. Oh my gosh. Tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. And then we're going to talk about all the good, exciting things you have coming up. Yeah, when I was younger, I, I wanted to be an artist as a career. Like I was that kid who was always into drawing and painting. Oh, and then when I, I yeah, I told my parents, hey, I want to be an artist when I grow up. That's what I want my career to be. So my parents were like, you know, artists don't make any money until after they're dead, usually. I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they say that? <laughs> okay, Picasso, fine, whatever. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think Van Gogh had a painting that sold for 80 million. He never sold a painting throughout his whole life. And now he had, um, I, I went to see his exhibit and he sold one for $80 million uh, after death, of course. But, you so know, that, that was so long ago. Life is yeah. different now. Artists it can is. make money now. <laughs> it is very true. But in, in my parents, they meant it to be of encouraging. Course. And oh. uh, but for, for what it's worth, it it inspired me. It fueled me to try to prove them wrong, and that was my life mission. But I did. Um, I, I majored in art because uh, I was a stubborn kid, and I wanted to follow my path anyway. So um, when I went to college, I majored in art. Um, Where'd I you go to college? Of, UGA. Go dog. Okay. Yeah, oh my gosh, my son-in-law is going to watch this episode for sure. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, it was a great school. It really um, is. It really is. All right. Yeah. So then you go to college. Now what happens? Yeah. Well, I was kind of a wayward teen. Uh, got into, got mixed up in the wrong things, got arrested a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And um, so coming out of school, I actually got suspended from UGA for a semester, which is due to disciplinary problems. This was 25 years ago. But um, yeah, made, made a lot of bad choices. And because of that, when I came out of school with a degree in art and a bit of a criminal record, you can imagine it was hard for me to find a job. So I was unemployed for quite a while coming out of school. Um, so I ended up working at this nightclub. My roommate was a bouncer there and he said, hey, you can get you a job working behind the bar, taking out the trash, you know, just cleaning up around the club. It was a very humiliating experience to say the least. And I knew that there were bigger plans for me in the universe. I knew that I um, I could use my talents for th something more. But what happened is some of the DJs at the club caught wind that I had artistic experience and graphic design experience. So they would hire me to uh, design stuff for the club. And this was kind of a raunchy type of, you know, you know, those type of clubs that we have in some seedy parts of Atlanta. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> on your way up, you know, it's okay. All right. Hey, in the um, news. Yeah, but, but I okay. needed to make money, so I did that work. But I always felt like this, there's there's got to be more. I felt yeah. stuck in that lifestyle, um, but I didn't see a way out. 
And one night on my way to the club, I got carjacked at gunpoint. And it was a wake up call for me. It was a super scary. Um, all my equipment was in the car and the guy, I ran for my life and uh, the guy drove off. I could hear the the wheels of my car screeching away in the background as I jumped over a fence just to, for safety. And that night I had the epiphany that I would never work in that industry again and that I would use my talents for something greater. And for a period of about 30 days after that, it was rough. I didn't have a car. I, um, I didn't have a job, didn't have any income because I left it behind. And it was very challenging, but I don't think it's a uh, coincidence that doors started opening for me after that. Ended up landing a full-time job as a graphic designer. Um, I was a freelance designer also. That's when I started landing big name clients like Tyler Perry before he was the Tyler Perry who we know now with the movies, but this is when he was doing plays and we had a working relationship with him for 10 years designing all of the merchandise for Tyler Perry's plays. And um, and then, you know, I started a, uh, a business that my girlfriend and I had started in college called Stuff for Greeks, where we sold fraternity and sorority paraphernalia. Well, that was a was school project, but it ended up becoming a real business, getting orders from across the country. I saw yeah. that on your website, you know, I'm a half Greek. And okay. when I saw Stuff for Greeks, I'm like, Bakra Boss, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, and then I saw sororities, I'm like, what a cute name, spin off to that, because all the sororities having the Greek you know, um, initials and all of that. So smart. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And still to this day, uh, 20 some odd years later, it is still one of the top websites for custom fraternity and sorority gear. So that is are, amazing. That's really thankful for that. You know, I like to just, you know, take a moment to reflect on that. You went from where you were, and this could relate to anyone in a job you don't like, no matter what it is, feeling like it's a dead end, feeling like you know you're meant for more. And it doesn't matter if you're in a Wall Street job, but knowing that's just not the place for you and there's something yeah. more for you, or if you're cleaning toilets or anything in between, doesn't right. matter. Good, hard, honest work is good, hard, honest work. But when you know you're meant for something else and you feel that burning inside that I've got something else to give, and you then took it to that next level. So talk to us a little bit about how you made those first steps. I see, I like that those guys, you never know who you're gonna meet wherever you are, whatever right. job you're doing, you can meet anybody, say, hey, you have artistic talent, could you do this? And then kind of blossom. So do you find that was like the biggest breaking point where people found out about your talent that started you kind of freelancing to get out of full-time doing something you didn't like? Um, well, it's, it's interesting. You know, I believe everything happens for a reason. Even those undesirable parts of our lives mm -hmm. are, are there for a reason to shape us into who we become. And yes, I got practice there um, doing designing the things for the club that eventually helped me design things for major corporations and and design the websites for my businesses and things like that. So, yes, it, it all definitely played a part in it. Um, but I really think that that big moment for me is making the decision to choose a different path. And that's what I teach people because it can be, it's really hard to change something in your life, especially something that you're used to, that you're comfortable in. I think there's a quote that uh, we prefer um, familiar hells over unfamiliar heavens. And that oh, just, like yeah, that. it just always perplexed me. It's like, okay, and, and a lot of people, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. It's like we we oh, kind of feel whether that's in your health or in your finances or or relationships, you're not happy, but you stay there instead of branching out into something new that could be even better. And but fear, always that fear, hmm. you know. And I, and I always like to say, fear, I feel the fear. False Evans appearing real, you know. That's we right. have to feel fear and do it anyway. But yeah. one thing I think that really makes a difference in my life is having that coach, having that mentor, because even the athletes, anyone, I mean, you were UGA, you know, the football team, <laughs> we know the football team, right? They're not out there alone, just running around the field. They have coaches helping yeah. them be the best they can be. They come talented. They already have these gifts, but imagine we had no coaches to help guide them, mentor them, push them, give them the right strategies and plays that they need to win the game. When they yeah. see each com competitive team come out, they're able to see their strengths and help them be stronger against that. There's just so much to the world of coaching. And people, I think, take that for granted. Oh, I don't need a coach. I, I can do it. I got this. Yeah. It's like, really? 
the best of the best don't. Tony Robbins has five coaches at any given moment. Right. Oprah has coaches. I mean, the greats have great mentors. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah 100%. You always need a coach. I, I don't, I can't, I can't imagine how I would get past in life without having someone who's, I mean, it's the closest thing to a shortcut, right? Have someone yeah. who stepped ahead of you and has made the mistakes or and worked with other people and and made and they can share with you those mistakes and those successes so that you don't make the same stumbling blocks and so that you can give get around that. But you Thanks have to so actually time. you have to be coachable and apply those things to your life. Um, a lot of times we we get coached or we learn things, but then we're too stubborn to actually implement them. Yeah. And it Coach can be can't pay action for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when would that, that epiphany happen? Because you said when you made that decision. So let's connect those dots a little bit before we go into the amazing TEDx world. Because I want to say you jumped into that. But are yeah. uh, you making the decision? What gave you that aha moment? What were you doing when you realized I'm going to make this decision and make this leap? Because that's where a lot of people watching the show might be at right now. They haven't made that decision, that aha moment. And never mind taking the leap yet. They're still kind of stuck in. I know there's more. Yeah. Well, I started, it was right after that carjacking. And what, what's crazy is like you're sitting at home and you apply your time to things differently than you would have before. And what we, like Oprah says, the, what we focus our energy on expands in our lives. And I was focusing my time and energy on the wrong things that were keeping me in the place where I was. So I believe if you shift your focus, your time and attention to something else, to where you want to be, then it will take you into that future life that you want to have. And just you talked about connecting the dots. And one of my favorite quotes is from Steve Jobs, where he says, we, we can't connect the dots looking forward. We can only connect the dots looking backward. And then, it, you know, things start to make sense in your life when you're looking backward. And so just real quick about my college experience in UGA, um, as our business started growing and we opened up retail stores, we got recognized. We won this business award from UGA called the Bulldog 100. Oh, I it, yeah, it recognizes the 100 fastest growing companies owned by UGA alumni. But oh, what? A, cool. Yeah, here's the special thing about this award. The first time we received this award, we were called on stage, and, and they give you your your trophy. And the guy who handed me the trophy was the same college president who had suspended me ten years oh. earlier. Uh, like in his office face to face he has suspended me now he was handing me with this business award so uh -huh. that for me was a full circle moment and i knew that i was finally on the right path and in alignment for what the universe had planned for me was he proud of you was he like just so ecstatic you know it was, there was there was, were a line of people in a crowd so i didn't get a chance to have a conversation with him but there was a look on his face and i would like to think that he he recognized me and, and knew the story and was proud, but I didn't get a chance to actually have need a to reach out to you. It's so neat to see <laughs> the trouble wayward kids. It's yeah. you're still kids in college making good because, you know, the brain doesn't even develop till you're 25. So, so many mistakes are made, yeah. you know, before you hit the age of 25 girls and boys. And then after that, to see a student, to see someone you mentor, someone in your life really do good. I mean, you know, I hope you guys will have that conversation at some point because yeah. he needs to know. He needs to know that it'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. But that's what I want for everyone. You can tell, we can sense, um, I believe we have the sixth sense, our gut feeling when we're not quite in alignment with where we need to be and we're off track. Well, mm -hmm. when you get on track and then things just start opening up in your life, not that life becomes perfect by any means, but you learn how to adjust your your flaps on your airplane wings to, to navigate the turbulence of life. And that brings me to our uh, my TEDx talk that I did last week which was about just that what airplane wings teach us about life balance oh good title yeah. I, lo I love tedx talks because it's always sharing great ideas thinking about something in a different way so yeah. tell us what you can about it because i know whenever you're watching the show ladies and gentlemen go to youtube look up ethan king tedx and yeah. that's how you'll be able to find them anytime day or night on youtube because that's how they do it we're not allowed yeah. to you know chip clip it up or chop it up or have it as real. Only we get like 30 second option, but go to YouTube and find TEDx Ethan King. Tell us a little bit about it, Ethan, for us. Sure. Yeah, I was at TEDx St. George and I share some, some really deep personal moments from my life. So now at this point, I've been an entrepreneur for over 21 years. 
I've worked with other entrepreneurs and helped them grow. So not only do I have coaches and mentors, but I've also served as a coach and a mentor to others, which is, I believe is super important uh, yeah. to give and give back. Uh, but I've seen a lot of um, tragic stories due to people being imbalanced in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we can tell, like we've probably all heard about burnout and the stress and anxiety that comes from being overworked. And whether you're an entrepreneur or working a nine to five, uh, did you know that the World Health Organization now recognizes burnout as an occupational phenomenon? Really? Yes. Over 76% of people report some type of challenges, mental health challenges due to stress from work. And this is um, entrepreneurs and regular nine to five workers. So what the, the way we approach life balance isn't working. And we've heard all these multiple approaches like the 888 strategy, eight hours work, eight hours recreation, eight hours sleep, right? 24 uh, seven internet connected world. That doesn't make sense anymore. I mean, that was actually invented in 1817 after the industrial revolution because people were working 16 hour days. So they had to put some type of framework around it. So that worked then, but it doesn't always work now. And, oh, it's interesting. Um, I didn't know that. It sounds like something new, doesn't it? 888. <laughs> no, they did that back in the 1800s. They even came up with formulas like that. It was just work, you know, survive. <laughs> right. right. That's what it was before then. And then we've we've heard different things now. Like there's this, a lot of the, the big, um, you know, highly ambitious, motivated people have this thing called focus, where it's follow one course until successful. Yes. Well, that could encourage us to neglect our family and friends, neglect our social relationships, neglect our health and our hobbies. And a lot of times <laughs> you can't go back and fix those areas of your life. So then so we, hear, we hear about work-life harmony, right? But life that. isn't always harmonious, mm -hmm. right? So I present a new idea yeah, that, please that I inspired from that I was inspired by looking at airplane wings one day. So if you look at airplane wings, they're not rigid. They have all these little gears and flaps that are always in motion, always moving to navigate turbulence and keep your plane on course. And I believe we can apply that same constant contextual calibration to our lives across what I call the six dimensions of success, which are your spirituality, intellect, money, your physicality, love, and entertainment. And by being aware of your levels in each of those areas and making those minor, sometimes you got to make minor adjustments to adjust to the winds of life because life is always going to throw something at you. Sometimes you might have to make grand movements and larger shifts so that you can stay calibrated and soar above the storms in life and not crash and burn. I love that analogy because so many times I've sat in a plane like you're over the wing. It's like that middle area is always the one that has the seats available. And I always notice the wing is kind of very flexible, like trees, mm -hmm. very flexible. So they don't just snap and break. So they've made them in a certain way. So they are flexible. So they don't break off, you know, and right. I guess what a great um, thing for you to notice for that. So going into that, you were talking about your six different areas, six areas of life. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. You've got a wonderful book behind you that you have written, though, Wealth Beyond Money. Mm -hmm. And I know in your accolades, it says your work has appeared on Oprah and 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little about how now you've gone into this and shifted. And not just, I don't see you painting murals and doing your art. You've now <laughs> gone into TEDx speaking. Speaking, your work has been on Oprah and 60 Minutes. Talk to us about how now you've done that and what your, give us some of your best tips now still for those people like they're leaning in now and they want that tip. Okay. They're feeling something and they want to be wealthier. They want to take care of the balance of their life, but they do need more prosperity. Cause I find that's a real need these days. Oh, definitely. Uh, and wealth beyond money. It's not just a self-help book. We actually break down what I call the six dimensions of success. So each chapter goes into like your spirituality, different things you can apply in your life, practical, actionable tips like meditation and gratitude journaling and things like that. Uh, then the intellect chapter goes on to how you can learn things faster and ingest knowledge and apply it to your life. And then the money chapter is like a business book all in itself. So if you're an entrepreneur or not, I believe everyone, I don't think entrepreneur is cut out for everyone, not full-time entrepreneurship, but I do believe everyone should have a side hustle. 
something where you are earning money doing something that you love that you love and maybe it could turn into a, a full-time hustle because it's all about creating the life of your dreams whatever that is for you it's, it's different for everyone else but I, I give you actionable steps on how to to form your business how to do marketing and, and get more business how to execute how to hire um it's a that the money chapter is anything dealing with your career your finances it's all in there um to teach you how to is do that, that on your website yes ethanking.com or ethanking.com you said something just now that really i think we need to just make sure we just shine a light on it because you might have just released a lot of people from some of this stress you said everybody's meant to be not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur but you can be an entrepreneur part-time yeah. so many people i know that i work with feel like they've got to let go of that nine to five they've got to become that full-time entrepreneur really have that money freedom whatever but you are so right and so brilliant and that one sentence you just said you may want to always be a teacher or a nurse or something that's all we need great teachers and nurses and firemen and and you know accountants and every walk of life we need them but to have that side hustle that passion hustle, should you say, right. and be able to make that profitable on the side. Mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful, brilliant, another TEDx talk for you. Tell us a little bit about how somebody could make that work and still have these balances you're talking about, because I deal with a lot of mompreneurs. So finding that extra time to do that, we will do it. I mean, you know, we're not, not slothful in any way. We'll manage our time to find that extra hour we need. But talk to us a little bit about how you see that working out to be prosperous in a side hustle. Yeah, I'll, I'll use the example from my life because because we were talking about art. And um, I when I was young, I wanted to be an artist, like drawing and painting, had my work in exhibitions. And I wanted to pursue that as a career. But I ended up going the more practical route to actually earn money. But on the side, my side hustle was designing the Greek clothing that I told you about. But once I learned that it was the same exact graphic design skills that I took my art and transferred into the computer, and then you could transfer that onto apparel, I'm still an artist to this day. It's just yeah. that my canvas is not um, like an, a canvas that's on the wall, but the backs of people's jackets. And if you go on Stuff for Greeks or go on Zeus's Closet, follow us on social media, you'll see examples like we're not just putting people's logos on stuff. We're creating artwork on jacket backs that uh, allows people to show their passion on their fashion, whatever your passion is. We, passion we, on we, your fashion. <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. great plan. We get to, uh, to bring it to life. But it started as a side hustle. And I make that very clear in the book when I give you the step by step process. Because a lot of times it sounds great when, when we tell our story in this in these condensed manners and it's edited. Well, and that we don't always make a clean jump and like jump off the ledge and then go start a business. It's a gradual thing. Like I was doing my side hustle while I had a full time job. And when it got to the point where I realized, oh, if I actually apply this eight hours a day that I'm spending in my full time job, if I were to apply that to my business full time, instead of trying to burn the candles at both ends then what could what could happen to my business and take it to the next level mm -hmm. um so but you got to get out there and try it first and get some actual sales in the door so you can see what works because a lot of times people will tell you oh that's great yeah i'll definitely support you in your business uh, whatever but until they actually pull out their credit card right. and buy it, <laughs> then you don't know such a good point that when you're having your side hustle the mistakes that people make is like, oh, if I just quit my full time job, then I can make my side hustle profitable. But you're really making a point saying once it's pro making money, then if you know you have apply more hours to it, you can make more money. But you've right. already proven that people want it. People want to buy it and you have some sales with it. And now if you just apply more, you will grow it more. And I see a lot of people making a mistake saying, well, it's not doing anything. It's not making money. But I know if I just quit my job, I could make this something people want. So I think it's really smart. You're saying make it a successful side hustle. And if you're making any money at all and you're seeing people wanting it, seeing it's tried and true and they want more of it. Now you want to transfer more hours, more manpower over there to grow the money, not yeah. try to see it for the first time. Exactly. Is that kind of like the, the education you, you tell people the tip? Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. And I mean, when you get to the point where let's say you, you're working your nine to five and you come home and then in the evenings after you eat dinner, you're working on your side hustle from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. 
and then you wake up and you're tired and you feel like your eyes are bleeding because you're just exhausted, but you're actually making money from your side hustle. Mm -hmm. When it gets to that point and, and you're burning the candle on both ends, that's when you know, okay, I could probably go full time and look at the money. I mean, if yeah. do the math and if you could, it got to a point where I realized, I realized that my wife was working at the time. She had a full time job. So I was able to step out first. And that's when this was in like 2004 when I said, you know what? I'm going to quit my job and go all in on the business full time. But she's we had the stability of her income where she worked mm -hmm. in her job uh, or her nine to five for another year and to the point where she was able to leave. But we did the math and we made sure that we could live before we completely took the leap. But now that's been almost 20 years ago um, since we've both been full time entrepreneurs and it's worked out very well for us. Being st strategic about it is really important, not just mm -hmm. jumping from limb to limb and hoping and wishing and, you know, really being, you know, making it a strategy is so important. So tell us a little bit how your, it says your work appeared on Oprah and on 60 yeah. Minutes. Was that you and your wife? Was that your work? Like, tell us a little well, about what that looked like. People think, oh, wow, you were on Oprah. Talk yeah, that was, that was actually it. some of my graphic design work that I had done for uh, Tyler Perry. So, you know, Tyler is very good friends with Oprah. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> and early in the day when he first appeared on there and opened up his, the first uh, Tyler Perry Studios, well, I designed the logo for Tyler Perry Studios. So when you he did when it. Had this grand opening and they were shooting fireworks off behind the logo, you can look this it up. This was just recent. Place. This wasn't that long ago. Well, he's he's on his third or fourth studio now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this was his first, his very first uh, big studio. Where was that? Um, that was. I know now he's here in the you know well, south area. Yeah, it, they were all they've all been kind of in the South Atlanta. Georgia. Area. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, yeah, they were shooting fireworks off behind my logo and they they showed some of the work and I was like, wow, this is really cool. So it was on Oprah in, in 60 minutes, and uh it was really cool to experience that. And I've I've had the opportunity to to sit down with Tyler and have conversations with him, and wh whether he knows it or not, he is a mentor of mine in business because I always admired the steps that he took. And our first office was actually in Tyler Perry's uh, first office building. Back when he was doing his plays, he said, hey, I was his graphic designer. Um, he said, hey, we have some extra office space if we want to use it for your business. So we worked out a deal. And working there, like he owned the building and he shared one day, he said, something I learned from Oprah is own it. Like you want to own everything that you have a piece of. And that that has carried him to to massive levels of success, as we know. So he and encouraged us. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, how that happened and works for Oprah Winfrey, ne Oprah and Winfrey own, Network and own it. That's right. Own that's it. Cool. So when we, um, so after we, we outgrew that small office space that we had in Tyler Perry's building, then we moved the business into our home basement. Then when we outgrew that, we were looking at office space and we said, well, should we lease something or what should we do? But I remembered Tyler's words, own it. And even though we didn't have a lot of money at the time, this was back in like 2008, like right around the market crash, we scraped together what we had and we purchased an office building here in West Midtown, Atlanta. And uh, got a really great deal on it, did the construction from inside out. But now we own that building. And if you know anything about West Midtown, it has grown so much over the years. Yes. The belt lines coming through. And that was one of the greatest investments I've ever made in my life. But it, it probably I probably would not have made that decision had it not been for listening to Tyler, like like we said, listening to your mentors, your coaches. And it doesn't have to be people that, you know, personally, you can have right. mentors and coaches that you listen to their books, you watch mm -hmm. their their YouTube channel, you listen to their podcast. And these people can be mentoring you and coaching you in your life. But you got to apply those things. You really do. And that's it, such wise words to to, to to apply it because the best coach, the best author, the best people in the world can't make you apply it. They can lead you to the water. They can make you drink. We've all heard mm -hmm. that before. So I would love for you to give your wisdom to the viewers now because you're going to be their mentor for the next few minutes mm -hmm. on what you would most like to tell us, to all of us, about making that transition to profitability to making that transition, you know, you've got this dream, you've got this tugging at your heart, you want to make it happen. 
some of the things that they could do. And then let us know if you are, are you currently coaching? Do you take on clients? Are you just so busy doing that? I know you're an author and a speaker and now TEDx mm-hmm. speaker. How could people have maybe have you in their life? Right? Do you do phone calls with people? So tell us about that and give us some tactical advice for that entrepreneur. Maybe they're just a side hustler right now and really would love to make those bigger steps to a bigger life. Right. Well, it depends on where you are in life. And I do work with people uh, one-on-one coaching, group coaching. I do have some online programs. You can go to my website, ethanking.com and learn more. Just reach out to me, shoot me an email, and I'll figure out the best way to work with you for your needs and your life. But what I would like to share with you, no matter where you are in your life, is um, a bit of a prescription, if you will, but not drug, not prescription drugs, but something you can implement in your life for 30 days that will take you to the next level if you stick with this routine, but just for a 30 day period, because I know it can be tough to do things indefinitely. But if you think about your life in the terms of being like, uh, or each day of your life being like a skyscraper, well, what's the first thing that construction companies do when they build a skyscraper? They dig the foundation first, right? They go down and you have to have a foundation that can support this tall building that you want to build. Well, the same thing with your day. Your day needs a strong foundation. And for me, and what I've seen work for many of my students, is I implement what I call the gamer's routine. So the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I write down three things I'm thankful for. This is called gratitude journaling. It's nothing new, but just try it. Implement it in your life. If if you immediately wake up and just start checking emails and letting life blow you around, that's like building your skyscraper with no foundation. And what happens when a building is built with no foundation? Well, the wind can a gust of wind can easily just knock it over. So the first layer of your foundation is gratitude. Write down three things you're thankful for. The next layer is your affirmations. So what do you want in life? Like actually write it down. And I got this idea from Scott Adams. He is the creator of the Dilbert comic strip. Well, he believes heavily in affirmations. And um, before he ever started being uh, a cartoonist, he said, well, I, I will one day be I am a famous cartoonist. And he would write the same sentence down 15 times every single day. And that manifested into reality. And what this does, it can often sound woo woo. But what it does is actually reprogram your subconscious so that your actions become different because it's all about actions. You can't just wish things into it, existence. You actually have to, to take the action. The next part is meditation. So we have gratitude, affirmations, meditation. Now, I've, there's eight different types of meditation, and I break down all of them in the book, um, Wealth Beyond Money. But the one I practice most often is transcendental meditation. You can go to tm.org and actually sign up for a four-day class and, and learn about it hands-on. Or you know, you can take the shortcut version where I, I teach it in my book. But transcendental meditation is where you repeat a mantra silently in your head uh, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. If you can't do 20 minutes, if it seems challenging, at least take five minutes. But what that does is pull you in and it, it's like cluttering the dirt and the cobwebs in your attic and reorganizing things in your brain. And it, it does miraculous things for your life. And then the E is for exercise. We have to get out there moving every single day. Our bodies were meant to move. They say that sitting still, sitting down all day is the new tobacco. Like I've heard that. Yeah. I'm trying to get up all the time because of that. I have heard yeah. that. Get yourself. I've been on Fitbit since mm-hmm. they started back in like 2012 or 2013. Probably and um, get in, they say get in 10,000 steps a day. Mm-hmm. It seemed like an arbitrary number, but if you challenge yourself to hit that every day, you will see differences in your body appearance and how you feel, especially if you get out there and do it in the sunshine, get some vitamin D in. Mm. Uh, it works wonders for you. It really does. How does this um, also lead into your simple success plan? Mm-hmm. So simple is that the framework. So remember how we talked about the flaps of the plane? Yes. So those are the six categories or what I call the six dimensions of success. So being aware of your levels each day, take a take a mental snapshot. Where are you on your spirituality? So spirituality can mean different things to different people, right? It's not religion. That's not what we're talking about. But it's focusing on your inner game. And a lot of times, I mean, things like prayer, meditation, like these are all related to spirituality because it's taking time to be quiet, solitude, focus on the self. 
So if you aren't doing that in your life, and you're just getting blown around then your spirituality levels may feel a bit low. For other people, it may mean going to church or whatever your religious practice is. And then intellect, which is the I and simple. Um, are you reading something every day, whether it's listening to audiobooks. I love listening to audiobooks and podcasts when I'm out running or walking or exercising. Um, but always be doing something to boost your intellect. Even if it's sitting down and reading 10 pages of a book a day, um, you don't just want to go by in life without boosting your intellect. Your money, if that's the M part of it. That's focusing on your finances. If What you ignore will go away. What you focus on will expand. So you got to sit down, look that's at your good. money. Mm -hmm. Let's go say that again. Yeah. Say that. There what you, you ignore will go away. What okay. you focus on will expand. That's really good. It's really good. Oh, if you want more money, you got to focus on your money. And this, you know, look at your bank accounts every day. How can you get it up? Look at your stock account. If you don't have um, an, an investment account, open one up. Put a little bit of money in there. Learn the stock market. This goes back to the intellect part. Learn how these things work and, and get in there and play around with just a little bit of money. But you got to make your money. None. Yeah, exactly. A little bit. Okay. Good. I love this. Simple. S spirituality, I intellect, M money. What's P? P is your physicality, your physical presence. So this is where the exercise comes in to, to boost your physical presence, right? The Fitbit. Um, and I, I have a whole program in there. I have the Six Pack Dads program that I launched a couple of years ago to help other middle-aged dads like myself get into shape. And it's we have some tremendous success stories. You are the cover of a magazine for that. A friend of mine, who uh, Sherry um, Adair has the best uh, magazine. I know her. Yes. Oh, I love Sherry. Yes. I do too. And you are the cover of Best Self Magazine because yeah. of your physicality. Because you, what it says, you go from flabby dad to over 40 and fabulous. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you don't look over 40, but you look fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm I'm actually closer to 50 than 40, which is... Oh, I can't believe like 25, it. You know, just, oh, oh my gosh. You look Thank amazing. You. So amazing. Thank All right. So physical is important. One mm -hmm. quick physical tip. I know it's a Fitbit, 10,000 10, um, steps a day, but give us one more tip for the busy entrepreneur that works too much and sits too much. Okay. Nutrition. Remo just the, forget all the diet fads and crazes. Just try this simple trick. Remove one thing from your diet. Except vegetables. You got to eat your vegetables. But some people want to give up meat. Okay, fine. Or what I did, I gave up gluten. I gave up bread back in 2012 and I never went back to eating it. And within weeks, um, not only did I drop like 20 pounds, but my skin got clearer. My my uh, my focus got clearer. My, so it helped my mental health and my physical health. But I, I learned that if and I've seen the same thing happen when people like give up meat or give up sweets. Right, but if like removing sugar. that one thing from right. your diet can make a tremendous difference. Since you're on that note, and we all know how much our friend Oprah loves bread, and yeah. bread is thing. There's keto bread now. There's there's um you know um paleo um, keto gluten free. All these different mm -hmm. types of bread. The peanut pockets, all stuff. So if you're gonna give up bread, does that mean give up? Well, let's say somebody wants to, you're not saying you have to, but let's say somebody says, okay, I feel like bread bloats me. I want to give up my bread. Do we have to give up like all the bread, the flattened bread, the keto bread, the low carb, all that? And if so, have you found something that, that satisfies your hunger for bread in, and I'm not saying wrapping it in lettuce. We all know we can have a lettuce sandwich. <laughs> Is there something better that somebody can sink their teeth in to that really loves the taste and the feel of bread? Yeah, well, well thankfully, there's so many options today now for gluten-free bread and substitutes. So, what so I read this book that. called, huh? Yes, yes, I'll you eat gluten -free bread. bread. Okay, that helps. So, I, I read this book called Wheat Belly back in uh, 2012, and it, yeah, it scared me. I, I read it because I was like, because I had a belly, and I was like, oh, well, I, I wanted to drink. But what it taught me is that the way that wheat is processed in America and all of the chemicals and stuff cause a lot of problems. And um, basically the book scared me into trying it for about three weeks. I said, okay, I'm just going to try giving up wheat for three weeks to see how I feel. Now, back then it was really hard to get gluten-free bread. I remember yeah. I, there was one company in Seattle and I used to order 
frozen gluten-free bread and they would ship it across the country to me and it was like twelve dollars a loaf probably wasn't even good <laughs> yeah and now they have so many options in the grocery store so yes i'm good with the alternatives to bread okay, so, better, so it has to be gluten-free not just keto keto is different than gluten-free correct it is well there's some there's some overlap in there but okay. yes you you want to go uh gluten-free that would be my recommendation okay especially Great. in uh, this is due to the way it's processed wheat is processed in america okay i'm interested we'll have to look that up for sure all right so physicality so we know mm -hmm. um spiritual intellect money physicality what right. is l l is love oh, i it was hoping that <laughs> encompasses all of your relationships not just your romantic relationships mm -hmm. your family relationships your your social relationships with your friends with your co-workers uh, we have to be very intentional about nurturing the relationships in our life that are working. And sometimes we have to prune relationships that aren't working, that are toxic. But again, it comes back to awareness and being intentional about these things. Um, so one quick tip in the in the love department, it really boils down to communication around expectations. Um, I've been married for 20 years now, going on 21 years. Um to the same woman and okay <laughs> yeah and we actually work together we're business partners as well and, and people ask us how do you guys do it i don't i don't know i could not work with my husband or my wife i don't know how you guys not do it for everybody that's okay not for everyone yeah um and i say you know what i don't know that we'd be together if we didn't work together you grew together you grew yeah, same goal, we, same path. We path. have a mission. Yeah, we're we're side by side on the battlefield because entrepreneurship is not easy. Mm -hmm. So you you have a, a teammate, and like we know from the camaraderie of, of soldiers or people you do who do something hard together, travel together. Well, you form this bond versus instead of just looking at each other and and admiring each other for our looks or whatever. That you know we know that things fade over the years, and that that type of attraction can fade. But when you're side by side fighting with somebody um, mm -hmm. together in battle, I believe that that is the key to bonding closer. And you're looking out, out at the same horizon, you have the same goals in mind. For sure. Now, have you ever seen, I've been talking about this a lot lately because I saw it a couple of weeks ago, it was trending on Netflix and it, and it was the, so there's probably about four episodes in this series and it's how to live to 100. Yes, I love Good that. Yeah. Good, because the love oh. part, the friendship, that mm -hmm. breaking bread at the end of the day was a priority, not something you did on Thanksgiving and Christmas only. Right. We are so busy the rest of the time that love and relationship and friendship is like, uh, when was the last time you can remember having lunch with a friend? And if it even was more than a month ago, it's too long because right. they do it like on a daily basis, you know, yeah. coming home and having friends over Fridays and Saturdays. What's your input inside on that? Because I thought that was such a good piece that I didn't think was like top on priority, you know, right. eating well and exercise and living the good life. All that. But they really, all of those, you know, the Greek island, because I'm Greek, it's always looking at that, mm -hmm. Singapore, Costa Rica, all right. had that one thing in common, right. that love and friendship. Right. Yeah. It's a, yeah, that was a big eye opener for me. I, before I watched that show, I would not have guessed that that was a key element in yeah. living a long life. But yes, we were we were built to love each other and we need that social connection. It's a big part of life and keeping it keeps you happier and it keeps your stress levels down. I mean, stress is the main thing that takes us out. It's the number one villain for all of these things that we're talking about in the simple success system. Stress will pull you down. And, and I talk about this in my TED talk as well where I had a money situation where I felt like I was being pulled down in all the other areas of my, my life. And I had to intentionally focus on the other areas and those flaps to, to rise back up above that storm. So yes, your love, your relationships is crucial to living a happy, long, healthy life. And then the last is E, it's for entertainment. Your entertainment oh, yeah, experience. <laughs> People no. feel guilty for that, like the guilty pleasure. It's like, oh, I'm watching TV. It's okay. I'm so glad you're putting entertainment. Nobody puts entertainment on this. Good right. for you. Yay. Because you can have it all in the other five areas, but you can be bored out of your mind. You have to be intentional about designing experiences that are pleasing to you. Sometimes it may be just kicking back and, and watching Netflix. Right. Or for me, it, for me, it's travel. I love just getting out there, experiencing different cultures and seeing the world. So I'm very intentional about designing those entertaining experiences. If you're into sports, like going to the games, like making sure you do things that are fun, that adds to happiness 
and and love in your life. And you know, when it it's funny, the word happiness, um, I never really gave that word much thought when I was writing the book. In fact, the that particular word only appears in the book about three times. But the book reached bestseller status in 50 different categories on Amazon. And one of them where it hit number one was in the happiness category. And I said, wow, I wrote a book about happiness. Look because at you what, At the end of the day, <laughs> that's what we all want. We want we want to be happy. Now, these are just vehicles to get us there, right? You know, they say money doesn't make you happy, but the absence of money certainly makes you unhappy, mm -hmm. right? Money and, buys you choices. I mean, when you, when you can buy a good education or buy good doctors, buy... Right? choices buy good healthy food versus having to go to mcdonald's for the dollar meal makes a difference it makes you healthier and happier it's the love of money that is the wrong thing when you idolize it and it's all about the money that's when it goes down the wrong path and people get that so confused from way back when yeah. and forget that money buys you choices money supports nonprofits. money supports people that need it as we mm -hmm. see these war torn areas around the world that money could buy them food money could buy them mm -hmm. water you know, and if we have too much, how good? Because we think in, even give back more. Not that yeah, we have to yeah. wait to have too much to give back. Give back your last might if you can, like the widow's might. But it's all that money buys you choices. It's so important. So important. That's yeah, right. Don't feel guilty for making it. It doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy you options and choices and gives you options for other people as well. Yeah, it's just yeah. so, so important. And I find, especially with women, I've talked about this a couple of times as well. Uh, when Good Morning America did a study on men versus women when it comes to making money and accepting money is so different. You know, mm -hmm. a woman will take what she's given. And we're breaking out of this a little bit, but this is just like, I saw this five, maybe, three, maybe five years ago at the longest, how women will take what is given to them for this survey when all the men said, how do I get the next level up? You know, mm -hmm. men have no problem saying, I deserve the more. You said we get five or ten dollars to make a long story short. All the women said thank you to the five dollars for the survey. All the men said, How do I get the ten dollars? Mm, it was just so eye-opening, you know. So mm. hopefully we get over that because money buys choices for our family. And you know, our family is most important to both men and women. We care. So this is so good. I could talk to you for so much longer, Ethan. Thank you for this. So your simple method is amazing. EthanKing.com. Is that where they can get the book? Uh well yep. on money. Yep. You can get it on Amazon or anywhere, but uh, if you go on ethanking.com, I have some bundles in there. The book actually also has a uh, companion journal, the Wealth Beyond Money nice. companion journal. So you can implement that gamer routine into your life. It's a 30 day journal. Try it for 30 days. It will change your life. I, I've had countless people write me back and say, hey, I applied this for 30 days and it made a huge difference oh, in, yeah. in how I feel and how I manifest things in my life and, and they start to appear. So and give it a Oh, no, all your social media handles um, connected to EthanKing.com. Yeah. Yes, they are. Perfect. Follow you. Best way for people to get a hold of you. If somebody's reading your book and doing journey and say somebody, reach out to you. Best way to reach out to you to say, I love it. I have a question. I want to call. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Email me. Ethan at EthanKing.com. So well, that's simple. easy. Ethan <laughs> at EthanKing.com. Wonderful. You're going to get some emails. That's fantastic. All right. I have to ask you our last question, Ethan, mm -hmm. which is so appropriate for you as a TEDx speaker. I know as we, of dawning the TEDx stage, we, it's filled with people like you and I that want to share, you know, insights, share uh, new ideas, help the world out. Oh, I thought of something, maybe it'll help somebody else. Sharing of ideas, sharing of happiness, sharing of all sorts of cool things so the world can be a better place. So on that note, what do you hope your legacy will be? How do you hope people will remember you? Or are you actively living in such a way that you know exactly how you are, you want to design the way people remember you? You got a long way to go, but mm -hmm. how are you hoping people remember you and your legacy lives on? I want people to look back and say, Ethan inspired me to live the life that I want to live, to not be a victim of circumstance, circumstance, but to create the life that I want and actually live it. And I want them to look back on me and say, either he inspired me to do it. He gave me the tools, the actionable steps to do it. And now my life is different and it's better because of him. That is awesome, Ethan. Well, I hope everybody goes to YouTube. Ethan King, TEDx, you will find his presentation. Can't wait for it. We're doing this interview. October 30th, so it'll come out next couple of weeks, but then after that, it'll live there on YouTube, Ethan King TEDx. I can't wait. What is the title? Do you have the title of it so they can look that up as well? 
What airplane I'm wings teach us about life balance? That's good. What airplane wings teach us about life balance? So good. Ethan, thank you for being here with us today. So appreciate it. Thank you. It was wonderful. I enjoyed it. Me too. Me too. And now we're going to see each other in Atlanta because we live in the same area. Yay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for being here on Get Celebritized, where we hope you've learned how to earn more wealth beyond money, live more, live your big, wildest, best legacy so you can give back more. I'm Maria McGeary, your host. Until next time, have a great one. Bye for now, everyone.